little bit of a more personal video today. Uh, some years ago, I had virtually no money, like most young people, and I read about all of these rifles that were available, looked at all the catalogs, looked at Gun Digest, and there was no internet at the time, as inconceivable as that may seem. So we're talking at least over five years ago. <laughs> anyway, um, I can't remember what I was hunting with at the time. I think I had a uh, uh, 6.5 by 55 Swedish Mauser, and it was great, and the hunting was fine, and everything was good. Nevertheless, I looked at the catalogs, and I saw the Sakos, and I thought, these are the way to go. And you know my opinion on these rifles made in Finland. Unbelievable. Anyway, make a long story short, uh, th this is um, one, I think one of the best rifles, sporting rifles that's been made. It has the dovetail system for mounting a scope. I'm not saying necessarily that it's superior to everything. There's a funny thing that goes on with hunting rifles. I know people who hunt the, their whole lives with a Savage Model 99 in Alaska, and I've received countless letters from and emails and messages from other people. And just because somebody uses something for their whole life doesn't necessarily mean it's the most efficient and best machine. That's why hunting is kind of an art and not a, a sport for people who hunt with machines, at least as far as I know. Any, anyhow, this is a 308 and it has that fantastic uh, Sako aperture sight, which is removable. It sits on the dovetail, even if you can't see it. Uh, but I didn't have one of these rifles. I had the Swedish Mauser 65 by 55 I'm leading up to a point here. This is a short action, and I liked it that Sako made three sizes of actions. And you have to bear in mind at that time, I only had limited knowledge, um, simply hadn't been alive long enough to know as much as someone twice my age at the time. But they did tell me about the best rifle that was available. So naturally I would ask, and what is? And it was this rifle, which I have on the table now, which is now discontinued. And, and this is um, in 270. It's the long action. It's I, I forget the model designation A1 or whatever it is, but it's um, a long action of essentially the same action as the 579. And you have to forgive me again. I don't study like the Sako Arms Collectors Association. With all due respect, uh, all the details of these um, individual manufacturers and their firearms but this was to me at the time the ultimate rifle uh, i i thought that finland and sako put up probably the most balanced and perfect looking rifle the maybe the, some people say the wood was too light or too dark and the checkering and you know everybody has an opinion and every opinion is a good opinion uh, but this was it. For me at the time, I thought if I could ever afford one of these, um, uh, then I'd be totally happy. It took me a long time before I was finally able to buy one of these. And I'm just turning it around so the camera people can do their thing. Um, and if I remember right, the first one I bought was a 243. And to, it, I mean, as far as my thinking was at the time, it was like a Hollywood movie star. It was just perfect. And actually this one, for its age, isn't too far off of perfect. There are the odd, you know, scratches and marks, but it doesn't matter. You can see they even did something in the pistol grip cap. And the recoil pad is original. And it is kind of, I suppose, blondish wood. It has a wooden hammer, they call it palm swell. You probably can't see it on the camera, but for you younger viewers, uh, I think it was a German idea or an Austrian idea to put a bit of a swell in the wood here. It kind of makes contact with the palm of your hand. I don't know if it's critical. Some people say it feels good, but yeah, I mean, even today against all the custom rifles, I still think 
this is probably one of the best sporters or deluxe sporters just the way it comes across and the way it handles and I mean I would buy that that um, 243 in a heartbeat you can see maybe the Monte Carlo is a little racy and this is definitely not an English cheek piece but I think you get my point it was easy for me to think this was the ultimate rifle and you know how it is when you're young you think that the rifle you're gonna buy is going to be the rifle for your ever. Of course, in the meantime, you learn other things and life gets complicated, but uh, I thought I'd show you this fantastic Seiko Sako Deluxe. Sorry about the scrambled terminology. It's actually from the channel. I, I get so many corrections about how to pronounce things, um, and I don't practice in a mirror, so I, I do my best, but it's supposed to be Sako. That's that, and then I thought I'd put this on the table because it, this one, I still have this. We, we made a video on this and you may recognize it. This is that 85 Black Bear. It's quite a change, right? From this kind of idea, this one has three locking lugs, has the 60 degree bolt lift, removable magazine, synthetic stock, I mean, you get it, um, and I'm sure you know these rifles better than I do. At least this one has the iron sights, which are good. Actually, they're excellent on this particular rifle, which is probably why it's here. And then you go back to the deluxe Sako of old, and I don't know, have we made progress? Is this rifle worse than this rifle? I'm not sure but anyway I, and of course it should have iron sights but I, I can't bring myself to change it and everybody who's wondering about accuracy there's no difference I can't say this is superior to this well probably of the three the 579 and 308 is the most accurate uh, this with the aperture sight um, gives better groups than well this one and I, I switch around scopes, but anyway, everything is constantly changing around here. In any event, I, I thought I'd share that with you. Some people ask me about, co you know, my collecting and especially cherished rifles. I don't know if this is especially cherished, but this is what I dreamt of having. And other people were dreaming about Weatherbees and other guns at the time. The pre-64 was already long history. Uh, but I like those. I actually like the post-64 Model 70s. They were great. But for sure, top of the heap for me at that time was the Sako Deluxe. And I, I, I hope I can find a 243 in, in this particular rifle. It would be nice to go hunting with one. Believe it or not, after all that talking, I still never went hunting that I remember with a Sako Deluxe. Just because so many other guns kind of get in the way. Uh, but that's how it is. And as far as action sizes, somebody's going to probably ask me. I think that the the, the short action in 308 or 243 is about ideal. Uh, a friend sent me by email images of his 6mm PPC, and that looked pretty good. And it had a heavy barrel, and he sent me the groups that he fired at 100 yards. And I mean, it was supposed to be 10 shots and it looked to me like two shots. It was, it, or three. The, uh, the accuracy is phenomenal, whatever they did with these barrels. But accuracy doesn't tell the whole story. You know how hunting is. But anyway, um, thought I'd share that with you. Thank you very much for watching. And um, I'm going to skip all this stuff I usually say about Patreon and Instagram and just invite you to help me with my efforts here. You know how, and we'll see you on the next video.